Formula One is one of the fastest and most technologically advanced sports in the world. Hundreds of millions of dollars are spent every year by race teams looking to get any technical edge they can over the opposition, and throughout Formula One history this has resulted in some of the automotive world's most popular technologies being pioneered in Formula One first. For example, the pedal shift gearbox was first developed for F1 cars back in the 1980s and 1990s and now a common feature on many sports cars, while the Kerr system introduced to Formula 1 in 2009 is now seeing widespread use in hybrid cars and electric city buses. There is one technology, however, developed solely to extract maximum performance on the racetrack, and it was so extreme that the FIA banned it after just a single race. To find out more, we must travel back to Formula 1, in 1978. In 1978, Lotus was dominating Formula 1 with their experimental ground effect cars, which used specially shaped channels underneath the car to reduce air pressure and increase downforce. At the time, the legendary designer Gordon Murray was working for the Brabham team and was trying to find a way to replicate the Lotus's ground effect. Unfortunately for Murray and Brabham, the Alfa Romeo Flat 12 used in that year's car was just too wide to allow the use of Venturi tunnels, which were the primary mechanism used for significant ground effect. Murray, however, was not deterred, and set about finding another way to reduce the air pressure under the Brabham chassis. At this moment, an unlikely vehicle appears in the story. In 1970, American race car constructor Chaparral produced a design known as the 2J, which competed in the deregulated Can-Am series. The 2J had two fans at the rear of the car driven by a dedicated two-stroke engine, which sucked air from underneath the car's chassis sticking it to the ground. Despite poor reliability, the 2J proved incredibly capable, being almost two seconds faster on average than every other car on the grid. It was the 2J that Murray hoped to emulate, this time in a Formula 1 car design. Despite the extensive modifications to the Brebham BT46 chassis that were needed to accommodate the fan, the BT46B was tested successfully. However, driver Nicky Lauda described the BT46B as unpleasant to drive due to the incredible g-forces involved in cornering, which were much higher than that of a standard Formula 1 car. The Brabham team bought the BT46B to the 1978 Swedish Grand Prix for its first race. Murray and the Brabham team insisted that the fan was for cooling purposes and pointed out that using a fan to assist cooling was not illegal. This meant that the fan was therefore not a movable aerodynamic device, which were banned in the technical regulations. However, the true purpose of the BT46B's fan was immediately apparent. When the car accelerated, the fan sucked the car to the road as the downforce increased. Despite protests from opposing teams, the BT46Bs of John Watson and Nicky Lauda were allowed to race. They qualified second and third behind the championship leading Lotus of Mario Andretti. The race was underway, and the Brabhams were immediately competitive, with Lauda battling Mario Andretti for the lead. Watson's Brabham retired with a throttle problem on lap 20. Meanwhile, Lauda took the lead from Andretti following a mistake from the American driver. Andretti later retired with a damaged fuel valve. Once the backmarker Tyrrell of Didier Peroni leaked oil onto the circuit, Lauda was able to pull away. This was due to the fans' immense downforce. While other cars were forced to slow down to avoid spinning in the oil, the BT46B's ground effect was actually enhanced as cornering speed increased, and soon Lauda was far ahead of the rest of the field, lapping every single car outside of the top three. Lauda eventually won the race for Brabham, beating second place Ricardo Patrese to the finish by 34 seconds, despite not wanting to show how dominant the car really was. There was an immediate uproar from opposing teams, especially Lotus, who felt that the use of ground effect had been taken too far with the fans, and demanded the car be immediately banned for the rest of the season. At this point, Bernie Eccleston, owner of the Brabham team, was also the president of the Formula 1 Constructors Association, and managed to placate the angry mob of team owners by conforming to a compromise. The BT46B would race in the next three Grand Prix, following which the car would be voluntarily withdrawn by Brabham. However, the FISA, Formula 1's governing body, immediately banned any use of fan cars from that moment forward, and the two BT46B cars were forced to convert back to regular BT46 spec by the next round of the 1978 championship in France. Luckily for Brabham, the cars were still deemed to have not been illegal at the time of the Swedish Grand Prix, so Lauda's win still stood. The Brabham BT46B may have been immediately banned and served as a warning to any teams who considered taking the ground effect revolution too far, but it also holds near mythical status in Formula 1 folklore. It remains the only car in Formula 1 history to have a 100% win record.